right, hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today's moto vlog is gonna be about uh, the worst job I ever had. So, okay. So let's just continue on with the best job I ever had. I'll go ahead and link that one in the description below. That job was actually working at state parks, but this job um, was the job that I had directly after state parks. It was working as a retail manager for Big Five Sporting Goods. So for those of you who are not like West Coast natives, um, Big Five Sporting Goods is like a like a Dick Sporting Goods. It's like a sports chalet, sports authority. Um, but yeah, so pretty much it's like a chain of sporting goods stores that are found, particularly around the, the West Coast. Um, there's a couple of them in Texas, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, I think, but um, most of them are in California. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. So directly after working at California State Parks, I was, dang, that guy's all mad blacked out. Um, directly after working for California State Parks, I was working um, as a part-time salesperson, just picking up hours at Big Five while I was working at uh, State Parks. But when State Parks cut my hours, and they said, hey, you can only work 18 hours a week, or 18 hours for the month. You know, I told my boss at Big Five, and he was like, hey, you know, you're an excellent performer. You do, you do amazing work. How about you just completely get rid of state parks and you just uh, you go full time here at Big Five? I'll go ahead and promote you to manager trainee, and then you'll go ahead and you know work full time here, full benefits, everything like that, and then we'll have you as a as an assistant manager in no time. So I did that. I. I quit California State Parks entirely, and I ended up working full-time at Big Five Sporting Goods and as a manager trainee, and then I've been, I got uh, transferred to a couple of different locations, and long story short, I'll go ahead and get to the cream of the moto vlog right here. It was the location that I was last at that kind of just like, broke was the last straw. So that was at Heaven, California. Um, that's where I pretty much like, I couldn't take it anymore. So that Big Five was, I think the sixth Big Five that I had worked at. And pretty much the way that I work is I will go wherever there is opportunity. I'll go wherever there's a, a need and I'll go wherever there's the opportunity of, you know, uh, a promotion. So when my district supervisor asked me to move and to move and to move because he's like, hey, can you cover these people? Hey, can you, you know, make this your permanent position? And then, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? You never want to be the guy who says no. You always want to be the guy who says yes. So that was me. I was like, well, hell, if I'm here, I might as well try to make as much money as possible, get in the good graces of my district supervisor and show him that, hey, I'm a team player. I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do. But um, it was kind of hard to transfer from location to location. Um, I mean, it was a good experience being able to see how different different stores in the same business ran the business differently, but that's neither here nor there. So um, it, was, it was an amazing experience being able to different people worked and to see how I worked and how I could figure out how to be a better manager and stuff like that. So um, I was transferred from location to location and as soon as the first opportunity came up um, for me to be promoted as a from manager trainee to a relief manager, um, I took it. So, wow, look at this, this is terrible. I'm going 58 miles per hour, fully pinned. This is no bueno. Um, Anyways, I jumped at the opportunity and I jumped at every opportunity there was to move and to experience new things and to work under different managers and sure enough it paid off. I got promoted. And of course the same thing happened then where I was like, okay, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move until 
you know, there's another opportunity for me as a second second assistant manager. So um, at this point in time, while I was working hard as a relief manager, um, my family had some issues and I had to move back home in order to help them out and try to, you know, support them. So I put in a request to transfer and my boss was super receptive to it. He was like, hey, I know you're a great worker. Family comes first. Go ahead and move. So I moved down here to Southern California and things were going okay. I mean, it wasn't fantastic, it wasn't the best because the area was really bad. So there was a lot of theft, there was a lot of, a lot of bad employees. And, um, the managers were good at, at my first location, but I got transferred two more times. I got transferred temporarily for about a month because I said, hey, I wanna, I wanna take every opportunity I can to show my district supervisor. And then he said, hey, I think you're ready for a promotion, but let me go ahead and throw this test at you. We're gonna go ahead and put you at one of the more difficult stores to work at, and we're gonna see how you do. And come Christmas time, if, um, if you do well, we'll go ahead and promote you to second, second assistant manager. So in terms of benefits and pay, as a manager trainee, I was worried making, I think, $13.95, and I had full benefits, medical, dental, life insurance, 401k, um, full benefits, really good, awesome stuff. When I got promoted to relief manager, I was getting paid $15.90. So I eventually, when I stopped being a relief manager, I ended up at $16.15 with full benefits, you know, um, 401k and life insurance, all this, awesome, all this awesome stuff. So, but it was this last location where my district supervisor, I guess he saw that I was the kind of go-getter kind of person and he wanted to use me as much as he possibly could in the worst possible ways. So he threw me into this location where a lot of people, you know, failed at. And they failed because the district supervisor decided to turn a blind, he decided to turn a blind eye to the failures of the store manager at the position. So I was working there for about three months and it was just so hard. Like it was the worst possible area, like in terms of the demographics. So um, Hammett, California is probably the worst place in Southern California. There's, there's gangs, there's crime, there's drugs, and it's hot. There's no, it's a desert pretty much. And there's a, a ton of violence and it's a low income community. So pretty much it's just like, hey, you better watch your back there people die there every day. So, um, you know, it's, it was a terrible place to work at, but I saw it as an opportunity to work, and then I didn't realize what was going on until about a month or two after, um, during the end of Christmas time, where I was like, this store is a freaking mess, man. One of my coworkers, the second assistant manager, the position that I wanted, she was probably doing drugs or whatever, but she was, she was missing work, she was sloppy every single day, she was, uh, essentially doing her job and eventually she got fired so of course when somebody gets fired I expected I was gonna get promoted because hey I'm a perfect candidate I know what I'm doing I'm good with customers I know how to I know how to manage a business I know how to talk to people I'm, I'm smart I'm mature and I'm qualified but what happened I didn't get that position and me and the store manager were butting heads at the time um, because we had very different ideas on how to treat staff. So there's another video on what I did was uh, about, um, I think it was about respect, about earning respect instead of expecting respect. And I'll go ahead and link that video below, but um, Jeff was my store manager. Him and me had very different ideas on how to treat our staff. That's what they are, you know. At the end of the day, like I was one of those people. I know how stressful the job can be when you have when you have life outside of work. So I try to make my day, you know, I try to make their day as good as possible by doing little things here and there to make sure that they're okay. So I would say, hey, you know, how are you doing? Is everything okay at home? How's school? Is that the other thing? And of course, when you work enough with enough people, you start to you start to realize how they work. So. 
you would know, I would know when people were having a bad day or something was, you know, going catastrophically, 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 that's not even a word, catastrophically wrong in their lives because I would see it. But my boss, on the other hand, Jeff, he wouldn't even understand it. He would yell at them for not performing well at work. And of course, part of it's like, hey, you know, he's jaded to the job. He's been working there for 15 years. Still no excuse. You should you should know how to treat people like people. So me and him, we kind of we butted heads on a lot of things from the staff to how the store should be merchandised. And let me tell you what, after working at five other big fives, I knew how to run the store. I've seen stores that ran well, and I had seen this store. And this store was nothing compared to it was like a disaster. There was nothing good about the store. Not even the location, but it was real bad. So, you know, we, we butted head on a lot of things, and um, I guess he gave me a bad review. And my district supervisor at the time, he said, okay, well, uh, I guess that's that. I guess we'll keep him as relief manager. While I was still doing the second assistant manager's work, she had gotten fired at the time, and I was doing her job literally. While she was there, the weeks leading up to her being suspended and eventually let go, I was doing her job. I was still doing it for the 16, 15, or whatever it was, and I had not gotten promoted, nothing, no pay raise, and you know what? I didn't get promoted to that position either, and I knew I could do the position because I was already doing it, and that job, it was just like, it was hard. It was hard every single day leading up to that. There were people who would, you know, it was like a tug of war. It was a tug of war between the staff and the customers and me and the upper management. So the store, the store manager and the other assistant managers and stuff like that. And I would take my home, my work home with me and I was super stressed out all the time. And it would just, just wasn't fun. I wasn't having a good time at all. I no longer had respect for my senior members of management and I no longer had respect for my district supervisor and it was just bad it was a bad time I was emotionally drained and I was um, I wasn't being respected as a hard worker that I was and having the work ethic that I did and I just got blown over for a promotion and it, it, it sucked man it sucked, it sucked a lot and like there's there's no excuse for it except for my I got screwed I got screwed bad. So as soon as that happened, as soon as I um, saw that I wasn't going to get promoted and they brought someone else in, I, I started searching for other jobs. And that's I, I found a new job, and that's where I'm at right now, and I'm way happier. I get paid less, and there's no benefits, but still, there's there's a value to emotional happiness right now, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy at where I'm at. But this job really sucked, man. It was, it was retail for one, and it was a retail manager position. So I had seen how easy this job is supposed to be, and it just wasn't easy at this location. My boss made it as hard as possible for me to do my job effectively. And I told him that. I was like, hey, you just need to tell me what to do, and I'll do it. But, you know, he he's not like that. He's like... He's the kind of person who will tell you what to do, and then he'll totally backtrack and be like, oh no, I don't like that at all. Why did you say that? Why did you think that was okay? Why did you do that? And I'm like, because you told me exactly to do it that way. And you know, it was garbage. That happened every single week, day in and day out. And it was to the point where I was no longer happy going to work, knowing that I was gonna have to see my boss at work. And I tried to talk to him about it. I was like, hey man, I think we have some different ideas on how on how the, the store runs and, and this, that, the other thing. You know, I think this way works better. And he's like, no, I've been doing this for 15 years. My way works the best. So go ahead and do it my way and uh, we should be fine. And you know what? That's garbage, man. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing something, you should still be able to take constructive criticism well. The thing is, I wasn't, I didn't have these ideas founded upon a foundation that wasn't stable. I had worked at five other big fives, man. Like, and 
I had seen the exact job that I was doing and I was doing it and I was taking, I was nitpicking the best things from every single job and you know, this guy, he was stuck in his habits of being there for 15 years and he's like, oh, this is, this is how I do it, so this is right. And no, that's not right. It's not right because he lost my respect when, you know, when he, one, disciplined me in front of other employees and two, did not respect his employees beneath me as actual people. So that's really messed up, man. And I'm not that kind of person. I respect everyone, no matter what your job is. Because one, like, they're people. Two, life happens outside of work. You never know what's going on in their life. And three, I was in their position not too long ago because I work from the bottom and I work hard. Or at least I try to put myself in their shoes and figure out how difficult the job is. I also try to coach them up to the next position. Because I never want to see someone stagnate at a job. Whether it's the guy who's just a part-time salesperson or it's the guy who's a manager trainee or it's, you know, the first assistant manager. Like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to try to help that person no matter what. No matter what I see them do, no matter how long they've been working. If I see them and I can see that they're doing something less effectively than they could be doing it, like, I'm going to tell them. But at this job, at Hemet, Hemet, California, Big Five Sport of Goods, my, the staff there just wasn't having it. My management team wasn't having it. It was just hard every single day. And it wasn't fun anymore. I was stressed out all the time. And when you bring your stress back to work with you, you're not having, you're, you're not going to have a good time because that stress is going to take the focus off of the task at hand. And you're just going to keep making mistakes. And it's just going to snowball. More, more stress equals more mistakes, which equals more stress, which equals more mistakes. And then you get to the point where you start, you know, you start abusing, you, you know, in the case of my second assistant manager, you start abusing substances and all of a sudden you get fired. And like, dude, that's, that's not a good spot to be in. But I mean, I've done some really shitty work at that job. And it was, the thing is, it was the same stuff every single week. And I just couldn't fix it. I couldn't fix it because my boss didn't want to. And then when I would try to do it on my own, like there were some days where I would get away with it, but there were other days where, you know, I would get I'd get disciplined for doing, doing the job differently than my boss had expected it to get done, but it still got done. But he would yell at me anyways. So, I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, the job wasn't, it wasn't like, mentally or physically taxing by any means. Like, I've had way worse jobs in terms of being, like, lifting heavy things, working hard day in and day out, and I've had, you know, mentally draining things where I really have to think and I'm mentally exhausted, but at this job, I was emotionally exhausted when I knew the job was supposed to be easy. But anyways, guys, you know, this was kind of a long one, but Again, guys, 